check this out. Welcome back to another episode of the Four Horsemen and welcome back to the channel. As you can see here we have a 1983 GMC Vandura made by Greenlight. It's the turtle wax van. And like always at the end of the video you're going to see pop up on the screen a link to uh, the other guys channel you could go over there and watch their video and also uh, this was my turn I provided everybody with the same casting I chose this one as uh, many years ago I think I was watching the speed channel I think it was they were doing this uh, show about a guy that took vans and turned them into four by four so you know that always seemed interesting to me also lately uh, if you follow the jeep world with the new gladiator uh, the outlander buck seems to be having an effect it seems like everything or everybody is turning their uh, jeep gladiator into an outlander and what's an outlander they basically create a uh, the vehicle that could go four by four right on a highway plus it has a bunch of stuff on top to accommodate for uh, staying out on the field so the theme here is four by four but I'm also going for that uh, outlander look so let me get the, the drill Flip this open and uh, we'll continue. All right. So we only have one post. So that means the chassis got to be hooked in the back somehow. Plastic. And there's the metal tab. But it's green. That's weird. See that when opening these, it's not the same as opening a Hot Wheels. The posts are smaller. So I'm going to start with the big drill bit here. You can see that the machine. Uh, messed up the base when I'm trying to make the small motion pose Automatic center punch. Yeah, this is going to be a tough one. So 
that's why the tab was green this might be glued down which is we oh no I see it there's a mm -hmm. a tab there but there it is there it is actually very nice detail here the the inside of this band this piece should be able to come off that's not important right now. Mm -hmm. See the front bumper has more melted plastic. This we have to take it off. This is complicating everything, or maybe it's gonna help us. You see, there's a lot more rivets in there holding up the windows. This front grill also has it's plastic, so I gotta remove that. So I'm going to do that and I'll be back. I'm sorry if you can't see much, but you see these, they hook on the inside. easy to remove there you go I got it mm -hmm. you can see this the ones on the side have a separate tap personally I don't I don't really care about the side windows
without breaking it. There you go, there you go. This one's gonna give me problems. There you go. So it came out the front. This is why you don't see a lot of customizers do a green light and two because they, they tend to be a problem to take apart. That's one. All right, one more. of the plastic off it's out and now we gotta remove that grill Luckily, the, the back tail lights are not like that, like the M2s in Auto World. So now I thought it was funny. Look at here. The door is on this side. You can clearly see the door. All right? They painted on a handlebar and the, the keyhole on this side also. Isn't that weird? Right now, I'm gonna clean this off before I uh, strip the paint. Make sure I have that ready to go. Although I'm not gonna use it. But I wanna make sure that it's not visible once we put it back together. And um, you can see that the post was not that center with the chassis. So I gotta knock this down and fix it. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be back. All right, got my drill in here. Put on my uh, magnifying glasses here. Center punch. And too far away for me to see. So I'm 
tight enough. <laughs> Go a little bit deeper. deep enough so I have this call it the apple good enough once I put the the windshield back on it should be long enough to hold it in place but not to be seen from the outside All right now I got just got to tap that tap that hole The other day somebody asked me where they could get this handle. So I repeat this every video, but everything I use, there's a link uh, in the video description. I've been using it for uh, for years now. I like the texture that I have. Makes this job a lot easier. All right, that's good enough. Now let's talk about this. You can see that this uh, base here also includes fenders, but here is a tip. Um, if you've been following me for a long time, you know that I've done uh, quite a few 4x4s. And when you're dealing with a metal base, it's usually a lot better to do your own base. And I've, I've got videos on that too. So for this build, I'm going to be banking my own base. Now, I want to use the same rims 
and I'm gonna show you just what I mean. I think my idea is gonna work if I could get this out. Mm -hmm. I think I might need a. There's usually one one of the sides it's weaker than the other. But I definitely gotta get some pliers to hold one side and turn the other. Give me a minute. Okay. Got these plastic ones. See if they do the job. I don't think they fit. So I'm gonna have to put on the tire. See if this one fits. And they really went to town with the glue on this one. Let me see if this one in the back is easier. That's just the rubber. The rubber is spinning. The rim is not. And I really don't want to cut the axle. This is the reason. I got this old green light set here. It's old terrain. And I do have wheels with the tires. But I want to see if I can use the same rims. But with the these tires. I don't know why. Or I could just use the included rims. But I will get these off. I'll be back. Got one side off. Check it out. Let's see if I can do this side. Seems like I have less space back here. Boom. There it is. All right. No. The tire's too big. So that doesn't work. So I'm gonna have to use these rims. I don't wanna go excessively high on this build. So right about there should be pretty good. Right there. All right, let me get the paint stripper and I'll be back. And we're back. I still got some of the good paint remover, which is good because uh, these uh, green light paints, they tend to be very tough. So we'll see how it works. I move the table out of the way. Oh yeah, look at that baby.
Yeah. I'm gonna go clean this off. Clean it up. And I'll be back. Check it out. I'm gonna be cutting this back door. Uh, we don't have enough material down here to leave this in, so I'm gonna have to cut the whole thing. I'm gonna be using the smallest blade I could find, eight slash zero. And in case you did not know, the proper way to install the blade is the teeth have to be pointing towards the handle that way you cut when you pull towards you not when you're pushing uh, they, I've also used let me show you over here have many left these round ones and yes I did say round the problem with these is that uh, they are very difficult to follow a uh, a path since they could cut any in any direction but they are good for when you get to let's say this part over here all you got to do is start moving sideways and it'll start cutting this way but today I'm not in a hurry so I won't be using the traditional one to cut Yes, the blade is greased up. You see how it only cuts when I pull towards me. This is going to take a while, so you can't really force the blade. You got to let it do its thing no they came pre uh, lubed but you could also use my beeswax here Alright, I'm going to be back when I'm done. Alright, check it out. Nice. Alright, let me show you how I was able to do all this. Alright, so here we have a paper clip. Let me get my glasses on because I, I really can't see and this is why I can't record all of this. I have to bring everything to my face to be able to see nowadays. Uh, I cut a groove with my Dremel in the door. That way the, the paper clip sits in there. You can see that over here in this one which is another piece of paper clip in there, bent outwards, which this serves as the door latch. You can see one side is longer than the other one. You have to play around with this angle here. 
you can see it's loose right now but once I tune it in I'll glue it back in place and the inside using polystyrene created this channel here which enables the door to slide but not only slide it needs to slide and be able to come in to be flush with the rest of the casting I thought about doing this with a with a tube right like this but with a tube I wouldn't have that uh that movement of being able to you know to have the door move in all right here I have another piece of uh, polystyrene which the only purpose of that is to keep the door from uh, going in and staying flush with the casting here in the front as you can see here in the seat I had to cut a groove here where the paper clip basically rests here holds the door also in line and there is another hole over here for the door latch this seat I also had to glue in place because these seats move around and I needed that one to be permanently still I couldn't have it moving around now all of this took weeks to figure out so it would have been crazy trying to uh, record all of this so here we have 332nd aluminum tubing everything I use is gonna be in the video description if you can't find the link let me know and I'll, I'll give you a link 116 brass rod for the drive shaft and basically I use one of these clips here I think I use this back part I think I don't know what's in the front then I sand it down created a transfer case as you can see here I use my uh, 1 16th drill bit to drill holes here 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 and here bent a paper clip here put it in through the inside glued them in place to be able to glue them back down here making sure everything is lined up the whole purpose of this was and this is why I didn't do a a fully working suspension because as of right now check it out right now it's higher than I want it to be but look with the door open it's pretty close to the tire and if I had a working suspension it would have been eh, it would have been crazy but the main feature I want it to be the the opening door here I haven't done one of those features in a while of course all I got to do is pull this apart I'll take the, the tires off and I can paint the base and all this black maybe paint the, the drive shaft uh, gray or something but this is easy it really took a while to figure all this out now I mentioned I believe I mentioned in the beginning that I was going to do uh, custom bumpers. Here is the front one. So what I did was I used, uh, you can see the layers of polystyrene. Basically did one, fit it, and when I had a shape that I liked, I then glued two other pieces and then sanded everything down use my uh, small 116 drill bit to drill holes in the back 
and also use polystyrene rods here which is they are about 116 they come in in a bi variety pack that I bought on Amazon I'll try to put the link on the bottom but they fit rather nice look at this and can't have a bumper like that without a winch cut a little piece here of 116 rod which I'm gonna do here in the front to simulate a winch basically did the same for the back bumper and yes I know these are long I'm gonna cut them once they're there they're ready to go you can see the base pokes out through here I had to use my Dremel to reduce this a little bit that way the bumper would kind of fit tugged in there and yes it is big you can see also here I cut a groove here so I won't have any problems once I paint like I said yes it's big but there's a reason for that look at this my roof rack I drilled holes with my 1 16th drill bit on the roof here and boy this this roof rack really really had me going crazy Thankfully, I had some medicine. Hmm. You want to know what's inside there? Put a link up here. You can see my, my other channel. So, like I mentioned, I still need to make a ladder. I'm thinking about making it on this side. Maybe permanently don't know yet I haven't crossed that bridge yet that's gonna be a surprise until the end and the purpose of this is thought about making a I can't put this on right now let me see if I can I won't be able to put it in until I cut the until I cut those uh, rods same problem here in the front but my idea is that once the bumper is in there that back bumper since it's high off the ground and you're gonna be basically going up the grid with this van you could use the bumper as a bar so you could put your drinks while you're sitting around you know what I mean Basically, the only thing I got to do left is the ladder. And this thing, uh, first I did it using the, the 116 rod here. And I had rods going across. I had little pieces of rod going down. But it's just too weak. The, the glue, it's just crazy. I had to do it three times third time I did it I was happy with it I set it to the side of the table when I started working with the bumpers somehow it just fell off the table the moment it hit the floor it just broke apart so that's why I went polystyrene here with the base and I used the two uh, round rods here as the side I'm going to make that's another thing I want to make just need I need more of this to find inspiration I thought about cutting uh, little pieces of rod to make uh, used to call them back then marshals but they're basically fog lights but I'm gonna make a, a new 
type of light bar here in the front using the same polystyrene here now another step that I have to do is you can still see the layers they've been glued together using poly uh, gorilla glue this product here we need a this we need some locking tweezers here be careful with this this basically melts polystyrene and should help erasing or hiding the the different layers here but it doesn't have to be perfect I already did sand this down this the, thing, the only thing it does is like it'll smooth everything and it'll make it look like it's a one piece but of course I need to hit this with a primer and that should do the job so this has been a 12 minute update of me just telling you what I did imagine if I would have recorded everything so I'm gonna go do the the light bar and the ladder and basically paint it I'm not gonna go crazy with the paint I'm gonna go a typical desert storm paint job here basically a sand color I think it fits the build and I'll be back. Alright guys, and here it is. The Outlander van. The theme was 4x4. Four four, so I extended that to having an opening door. We have Mike over here drinking. Also, you might remember Mike. Now he has Jeff. Mike and Jeff drinking beers. We have a Corona case on top. And you might notice, maybe you think there's uh, different rims. The rims are the same. I just painted them uh, charcoal gray with rustoleum the tires are different though uh, I had this set here which I bought a while back and when I got it uh, I found that it had a, a, a little problem you can see it has similar, similar rims See? and of course everything falls and I found it here it is similar but look at this it has no way to install them in a car so I have to make a, a back part to be able to attach the axle I don't know what happened here, but that's that's how I got them. Tires are pretty cool though. So you see if you put them on, the rim basically is loose in there. But they do make a nice spare. Also, the ladder here is removable. You could put it wherever you think it's better to climb. There. And this is also removable. Oh, there's some little dust there. Light bar. 
And of course, you've already seen the door open and close. I did not install the side uh, windows. Black trim all around. And the front glass, you can see it has some stress mark. That happened when I was installing it. It just didn't want to go in place. It's really, really tight. Because you can see it has to hook here on the on the bottom but it's in there it's already in there and of course dsc164.com my webpage on the sides so that's going to be it for this episode of the four horsemen please make sure you check out everybody's uh, video that's participating like always I will leave a link to everybody's channel here at the at the end let me know in the comments what you think that's gonna be it peace out